阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀，阿弥陀佛，阿弥，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。Good evening, everyone, or good morning.、Uh, if you're on the other side of the Earth globe,、uh, today we'll continue with our part three:、uh, the treaties and response and retributions, section three, crimes and offences. So last week we have give a quite hefty introductions,、uh, hopefully more structured approach on 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 what part six is about.、Uh, in Chinese, it's called、uh, shamelessness. You know, it's being. Uh, very stubborn towards the good advice and、uh, unable to,、um, how to say, unable to、uh, correct or、uh, unable to be more aware on conduct and then how your own conduct affects the others. And this sentences is、uh, pretty much straightforward in that regards.、Um, so we、we'll、continue from last week.、Uh, This week we talk about、uh, take credit for kindness shown by others while shrink, shir shirking responsibility for one's own misconduct, to scapegoat an another or have others bear one's deserved punishments. So the first half is、um, you know being a person、uh, taking something that you are not entitled to, taking people's credit. Uh, taking event,、um, taking someone else's work and put your own name on top of it.、Uh, that's the direct translation. Also, for whatever the、um, problems that you have caused, you push the responsibility onto others.、Uh, that's also another false、uh, transgression, right? Which is shameless.、Um, why a person resort to this kind of Conduct.、Um, if we think about it, like you know, owning up a responsibility sounds like common sense. But when it happens to you or me, we might ask ourselves: Will my instinct, my first instinct, be you know, stand up and say I'm wrong, or will be more like,、uh, yeah, if I can hide it, I will hide it. If I can, you know,、uh, deflect it. I might deflect it, or if I can make it insignificant, smaller, I would, rather than、um, rather than owning up and say, "Hey, I made these mistakes." Right. So, what drives these kind of actions, motivation behind this kind of、um, behavior?、Uh, to be honest, like we all have our own self-preservation instinct, right? We call it self-preservation. You know, fight or flight. This other situation, social context in work, it also triggers that sort of fight or flight response. Like, yeah, I need to defend myself. You know, I, I'm not fully responsible for.、This. But if、um, you know, if this kind of mindset is over indulge and be say、um, allowed to fester, controlled. Eventually, become since you know no one knows. Might as well take other people's credit, you know, because the result matters, right? It doesn't matter who made it as long as someone else is there、uh, taking the credits. So that kind of a、uh, very、uh, disgusting behavior starts to fester, get cancer. So this is what happened as well.、Uh, the root of it is selfishness. No other way to explain it than this. Just Too much attached to your self, whatever you identify as yourself, your name, your reputations, your you know, you know, fame, identity, whatever you identify as you. That strong attachment will cause people to start thinking to be defensive. I need to be. Making sure it's not my fault. That rather than say、um, 
how do we solve this problem? It becomes blaming, you know, uh, of putting the blame, deflecting the blame from yourself. As long as it doesn't concern me, I'm I don't care. If I might say, and then this further, you know, escalate into you know, so if no one knows, I might as well take credits someone else, or I might appear doing something with other people. I do the hard work, a lot of the hard work in the project, in the charity. But, um, you know, I just try to be associated with them just to get that sort of a credit role. So that, that is a mindset of insincerity. Uh, and, 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 and because, you know, allowing that kind of mindset to control you means that you, you lost that contact with your um, higher sense of self. You're more self-aware part. You become drowned in the pursuit of fame, pursuit of comfort, pursuit of better bonus. And that motivated you to do this kind of thing, you know, put all this bad thing to others and take all the good for your own. And on top of that, lack of access to, towards education, those people who in tune with their own conduct of their own action, call them sage, we call them decent people. This is also a very important factor. Without this kind of um, example to us, why would people want to themselves out there? They can just, you know, be comfortable on their own. Why would you want to go through all these troubles? To help people, or why do you take up the responsibility? No one is forcing you to take it. Those things cannot be cannot be confined to just legal. You can't be just like, oh, because the law says so, because, but you know, you ain't, you ain't guilty if you're not caught, mindset. It's fun to talk about it, it's, it's like a joke, but um, that's why we have this session right now, karma. All goes back to this again, like every action has a reaction, whether the reaction comes now or comes 10 years later or next life or not to you, but to your own love, ones, your children, your wife, and your dead descendants, your newborn baby, you never know. And that, uh, directly or indirectly, will be a result of your action. Consequences. There's always consequences. There's no other way around it. You know. In the end of it, you can't deflect your responsibility right away. You either get worse than what you have right now, if you don't, than what you ha would have if you own it up, you will get even worse situation facing you. Because that kind of mentality of uh, escaping that, that, that adrenaline, of escaping blames, escaping uh, our own faults, uh, is, is pretty laughable if we um, only look at this in a very narrow mindset and we're saying, hey, I'm still enjoying my fifth house, I mean, fifth car, and a luxurious car, I'm enjoying my own life and there's no need for me to worry about all this, think too much about this. Um, but when reality came crashing, that means your debt, and it's time to pay up for what you did, it's often too late when you realize, oh, everything actually counts towards some sort of invisible meters behind us. There is something behind you um, that's counting. Uh, I'm not talking about goals or anything. I'm talking about your action. There is a there is a meter, and that meter is stored in your consciousness. Consciousness, it's it's there. Right? It's always there. That's why you have. Your body will instinctively, you have, if you still function normally, you still have that sense of um, guilt, you know, that conscience coming out and tell you, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this, because um, everyone innately are good. 
not everyone is a Buddha by nature. That's the that's the that's the state of being, state of origin, the, the the original state. However, because we have been tainted so much, all these wandering thoughts, you know, this and that, that and this, come um, you know more ignorant of your own true self, and you get more caught up in those. Um, uh, uh, sensories and stuff outside so we lost that part so we need teachings to help us you know? so let's go into the examples what would be what would a person look like if they have a role model a good role model a person who is selfless who actually does contribute without asking anything in return or in the very least they are a consensus in the society that they are good people even they are rare they are really genuine good people in this world and they really want to do good for the community for no other reason than you know they are able to put themselves in the people's shoes um, people who were educated in that way you know, like Mr. Fan which I repeat many times back in Song Dynasty give out his savings for trust funds to support his um, hometown, you know, to act, basically he built up, he built all the infrastructure in his hometown, to support it. Um, might not happen nowadays, now that we have government doing that, but we can have like set up a trust for charities for whatever um, charitable cause that we might pursue, that, you know, they might have affinity with, you know, something like, you know, cancer prevention council and stuff like that. Those are examples. Um, the motivation is also very important, you know, just repaying the roots, you know, just going back to your roots, repaying the like, uh, kindness or the um, whatever the goods other people did to you. That can be a very simple motive behind. Um, we shouldn't we shouldn't allow ourselves to kick into that mode, right? Even someone's action might not be pure sometimes but as long as they do it it's a starting point for us we need to ask ourselves um, like back to the point right if you take credit for people's kindness right all you get is fame but you won't get, get anything other than just an empty hollow fame and then that kindness has to be followed up by commitment you actually need to commit to it you just take the kindness of others Others are very sincere and genuinely want to commit long term. And you only take it because of the fame it gives. Obviously, in the long run, you will be exposed. And so whatever the sort of fame or whatever sort of reputation you accrue, it's actually nothing. And even worse, you might even get a negative reputation when you are exposed. That you're stealing people's credit, stealing people's work, stealing people's um, genuine contribution. The other way, shrinking responsibility will only cause you to um, have to pay even more in the long run. If you if you avoid it now, you can't avoid it forever. One day it will come to you, um, job-wise, or responsibility to your family, or responsibility to your work, to your um, communities, etc., etc. Have to face it one way or the other. Deflecting your blame, deflecting your misconduct towards others is just, it's not viable. It's a cat. People who are affected by your blame, will deflect, I mean, by your transgression, they know. There's a saying called the God, the heaven knows, earth knows, you know, and I know. Everyone knows. Right. Maybe um, some people who have, you know, no un understanding of the situation doesn't know, or we have or ignorant mindset doesn't know. But people who can settle down, calm down, and actually think carefully, they might, they will be able to find out the truth one day. But why deflect it? Why not just be clear about what you did? What's your role in this? Why do you do this? And how do you end up? Uh, how do you end up committing this misconduct? And what kind of 
action you're going to take to amend it. It's always, always um, good to be come clean on this and all, and then uh, work your way out, your way up. So only then you have a solid ground. Rest on your heart will be at peace. So, the research I have made uh, on people who able to get in touch with their conscience um, and also use their abilities you know, to help people. Those people, they have huge respect and fame, but they are not, um, they don't need to rely on these kind of tactics. Once we understand there is such a good role model, there's, there's, there's no need for anyone to commit these kind of actions. Scapegoat. Inamori Kazuo, uh, Venerable Cheng De mentioned a lot about him. Thousand of Fu. Inamori Kazuo, he's a Japanese uh, entrepreneur who was a uh, very successful, very smart business mind person. At the age of 29, he founded some um, company and then another company at 52 years old, so about 20 years apart, 20 years apart. Found two companies. And both companies made it to Fortune 500. Uh, so proven that he has a very um, he has a very good management strategies, business strategies. And of course, in between uh, of his famous exploits, he was um, diagnosed with cancer. And back then, he already have prepared successors to take over his company. So he let go of all the responsibilities to his um, subordinates, to his successors, and become a monk. Instead of taking chemotherapy or anything, he just become a monk and live in the mountains. And after a few years, I think uh, Japan airline was in debt, 180 billion yen, approximately 2 billion Aussie dollars, about one Point something US dollars, one billion something US dollars in debt, and remember, Japan Airlines is in, on par with say United Emirates, Arab Emirates, those big top line airlines or Qantas in Australia. So it's a national um, corporations, and it will shaken a lot of um, people's livelihood. So the prime minister of that time. Uh, urgently you know require someone with the ability to pull a break uh, of this corporation from falling into insolvency which is debt bankruptcy so they went to the where now the monk uh, mr kazuo the inamori kazuo and back him to you know, they invite him to return to a lay people status to revive the to save the national corporation, you know, the uh, national corporation, yeah, which is the, the Japan airline. So what he did is he went back and took about two years of effort and not just restoring the um, balance check, balance book, which basically no debt. He made an end profit of 180 billion yen. So went back the other way. Instead of um, not just not only he res uh, resolved the debt issue, he also make it profitable. And exactly, you know, twice, twice the net worth. It used to be negative 180 billion. Now it becomes 100, not now, uh, back then when he saved it, put in two years effort, he bring it back to 180 billion positive. So that is a hand of a God in a way, you know. And for a person like this, um, and then after that, he realized his cancer is gone. Uh, actually, during his monastery retreat, you know, when he's on his own in his um, retreat for his, uh, you know, his, I think he's preparing for death because of cancer, or maybe not thinking about it. He's, he realized his cancer has gone. And then this happened. He was invited back into the world to help his nation. So what we're trying to say here is um, people with so what kind of 
people is Mr. Kazu and was uh, very, as you can see, he was very charitable. Uh, and he of, course, of course, he got salary for all that and all that. People of his talent, right? And he's able to um, enjoy any, anything he wants in life, but he able to bring himself um, to question what is what matters. And you know, even in the face of death, he's able to prioritize what is important. Um, he doesn't need to take credit for kindness. He just he got. He got that ability. He got the talent. He got the character, and he just need to work his. Uh, how to say? He just need to do his job, his duty, and you know, even in the face of cancer, something like impending doom, like cancer, he's not like, oh, you know, scared and trying to find, spend billions of dollars trying to find the uh, top of the line doctors or anything. All he do is. Make sure that there's a successor to his enterprise so that they are well think, taken care of. And he able because he's Buddhist, he also have cultivated uh, I'm pretty sure at least, you know, some meditations or sutra chanting and all that. But he able to see through let go. Uh, even he let go of the two, the two companies. He's still there. Who generates the wealth? Who generates the credit? Right, must be him. It's not the company. The company is just a result of his work, result of his effort. Right, and if we can think deeper beneath this story, do you think he has? He's he's a person who has uh, never made a mistake, or never did any misconduct. No, of course he has. Maybe he made a mistake in error in judgment, error in decision making, especially in the place of you know as a leader of an organization uh, and, and as a human, you, you will make mistakes. Problem is if we shrink responsibility and like, you know, oh, this is not my fault and all, find a scapegoat for someone under you because of your status and position. It's very easy, right? You can just find a scapegoat, take over the blame you know, so that you can remain your face or anything. Then his company will not ever, will not, re, will not make it to the top. Even they make it to the top using that kind of method, or maybe sabotage or anything, they will not last, right? So, so this is what what we need to think about in our mind. Like, does it really benefit you in long run? Because we, when we talk about selfishness, it's it's more often a, a rush to protect yourself. But you know, if it's a in in in, in how say imminent danger, that's fair. But it's something like this, which is long run. Who you are, who you want to be in the long run, but you might actually, you know, pull someone's leg, or you might backstab someone in the back, or you might um, deflect the blame for them. You might save yourself now, but you cannot save yourself forever, because who you are is a fraud. Why are you? Why? Why would a person? Be, how can a person be successful in the long run if they are a fraud? They can talk their way out of the problems. All it takes is one time. One mistake, one point to break through this bubble because empty, everything is empty inside the bubble. There's no content, there's no substance. It's a fraud. Hence the word fraud. Um, so, all of the story is don't be a fraud. No. Where you are, no matter how trouble it is, work from that point. If you, if you think there's no way up, there's no way up or anything, try to understand how. That's why we have this law of cause and effect and how to avoid um, falling into that kind of mindset. Because we can't see the result now doesn't mean that it will not happen in the future. So back to Mr. Kazuo. Um, yeah, nothing much. He just passed away not long ago, a few years ago. The very high age of 90 plus years old as well. So looking at his story, we can also think about, you know, a bit extrapolated this one. You know, losing a country is not the worst thing. You know, yes, it's terrible, but um, if you look at history, there's a lot of time people lost their homeland by invasion or, or by dissolution or anything. What is the worst thing is losing of your character, um, losing of your um, what makes these people 
the people, the culture, the soul, the people. Those nation or not nation is a construct, artificial. You just draw the line and say, oh, this is the A nation, B nation, C nation. It's an empty geographical place with artificial construct if there is no real human experience in it. And the real human experience, collectively, we call it culture. They are collective experience, we call it culture. And they share the kind of a common ground, consensus, uh, and, you know, loss of the land and blah, blah, blah. Um, so what builds a collective culture and what sustains it? If a collective culture lost its compass, its decency, its um, sense of you know, moral compass, sense of direction, right? And instead, it might indulge too much in one way or the other. Extreme violence, extreme pleasures, hedonism. Long, uh, sooner or later, it will dissolve into chaos. Because there's no sense of um, there's no sense of responsibility towards the, the, the community they live in. There's no sense of love and care. All about reaping as much benefit as you can from one another. That kind of society, obviously, as you can see in some countries, you will feel very alienated, very falling apart. And what holds them together is just basically money, profits. It's empty shell. So it all takes one thing to break apart everything. It takes one conflict to break apart everything. Instead of everyone trying to make this work. Everyone just pick whatever they can get, scavenge whatever they can get and go. Right? That's that's the worst thing. Um Yeah, that's it. Buy or sell false titles and honors to attend fame and win praise by fraud. Uh, secretly harbor and entertain sadistic thoughts. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's... First half, to buy or sell false titles and honors to attain... Oh, sorry, sorry. I can't hear myself. <laughs> sorry. Oh, God. To buy or sell false titles and honors to attain fame and win. Excuse me for a moment. I just can't hear myself talking. Why? Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. <clears throat> so back to this. Um, Gu Mai Xu Yu Bao Ning Xian Xing. First half, Gu Mai Xu Yu. So fame. Let's talk about fame. Let's talk about name. No. All talks about one thing. Fame, name, titles, honors, glory, certification, uh, maybe medals, recognition, accolades, whatever field you are in. Um, those are, those are how to say, those are a way to recognize people's contributions. And if there is nothing substance like I just mentioned in it, it's a fraud. Like it or not, a fraud will always be exposed. Like a bubble will always burst. It's just a matter of time. Um, if one say, oh, I can get away with one million, two million, that's their past life, past life merits, right? Maybe they will escape the law, but the law of karma will always come. They always need to pay the debt, right? Might not be by money. Money is not the worst thing. Pay, losing money is not the worst thing. Losing your life is the worst thing. And no, losing your life is not the worst thing. Losing your life and only have to realize you're in that sort of perpetual hell where you have to repay, say, tens of thousands of people you owe to. Maybe you escape, you uh, embellish the tax of a country, say in US, 19, like 20 million people, 20 million citizens, you owe every one of them a portion of the money they embellish. And each single citizen, if you have a good fortune that protects you for this life, next life you will have to um, repay all of them, one by one, as a cow, as a pig, as a uh, meat on the, on their table, 
being butchered, slaughtered, tortured, etc., etc. Doesn't matter. So that's even worse. The thing is, you can't. This is easily dismissed as superstition because you know, there's no foundation. You can't see it. Blah blah blah. My my five senses dictates my entire beings. That's that's the absurdity in it, right? Who owns who? No one even knows. Who's the master? Who's the who's the um, tool? No one even knows. We own by our own brain. We own by our, our own five senses. We own by our own body. You should take care of it, but you shouldn't. Like, you shouldn't confuse. Right? The house is to shelter us. We take care of the house because it takes care of us. Doesn't mean that the house becomes my master, and I become a slave to the house. How how does one become slave to the house? Instead of using a house as a means to shelter, so that you can have a peace of mind. You keep worrying about all oh, this, all oh, that, all oh, security, all oh, this and that. You become a slave to the house, right? So does your body as well. You're supposed to take care of it, have a good, proper sleep, right? which is talking to myself. Yes, I haven't slept enough. And then you're supposed to have, um, you know, uh, 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 using the tongue to give proper words, good words, words that encourage people, inspire people, inspire yourself. That's how you use your tongue. Use your eyes to observe good and bad, right and wrong, uh, wholesome and unwholesome. Avoid un- avoid something that is polluting your mind. Trying to focus on what is good or able to discern false, uh, discern the truth of the matters, etc. The eyes is used to observe things. Instead, we use our eyes to attach to what is pretty and what is uh, exciting, what is um, kicking our dopamine upwards, right? especially unwholesome things. That's also talking to myself. So this kind of thing is a very relieving proof of you being enslaved by your own desires, enslaved by your own senses. Uh, even Lao Tzu, the, you know, the founder of Taoism, which also have a hand in making these books, Says, Wu Ying Ling Er Mang, Sir Ling Ren Yen Mang, Wu Ying Ling Er Dong Ya. Something like that. The, 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 the five senses that enclouded you will blind it, your um, wisdom, your ability to discern the reality, your ability to see things beyond, your uh, ability to be in the present. So back to the point sell, buy or sell false titles, honors to attain fame and win praise. Same thing. It's a dopamine. It's very fun. It's awesome, and you know people recognize you, say good things to you, and all that, praise you. And if you have done none of this to deserve that kind of praise, obviously you will feel like a imposter. And being an imposter is a worst kind of a feeling you can have to yourself, to be honest, because not, nothing in your life is real. And um, in the end of the day, one of two minutes of fame costs uh, thousands of worries. It's not, it's not worth it. So Mencius once mentioned, you know, because you have the content, because you have the um, content, obviously you will manifest into a form. Uh, when there is intention, it will manifest into an action. So basically, if you have what it takes to be that person, you will be that person. And that person who won fame or praise because of the performance, because of the genuine contributions to whatever field they were in, because they actually have that sort of um, hard work and talent and, and and tenacities and stuff like that. And that praise is well deserved and they will feel at least because this is who they really are. However, um, fame, same thing, same goes to fame. So fame is, is the a form of your um, truth, form of your own truth. Why are you famous? Famous for something substantial. Okay. Fame is a form of your substance, your own substance, your being. Right? If you're famous for something who you really are, it's, it's just natural. You don't ask for it. It just came to you. And and it won't shaken you anything because you're just who you really are. You don't... You don't pursue it. You don't become slave to it. Like I say, enslaved by your own pursuit. It just come to you, chasing after you, 
fame and money and stuff like that. Because you are that person and you're just doing what you're doing, do right by others and do your own, you know, you harness your own talents and your own profession, professional skills at something and actually felt rewarding because of your pros of, of doing a good thing. Um, 实至名归和必要去求, yep, that's it. You have that talent, you have that hard work, you have that, you know, um, character quiet. Why do you worry about not getting recognized? Or rather, why do you worry about this kind of thing at all? You are living in your own um, wavelength, and that wavelength is doing very well. Fame come to you sooner or later. Even if it does not come to you, you're at peace. Right? So, in other hand, it, it, it shows that a person who go for, you know, baiting titles, baiting fame, they're constantly at the, the, the move, they're constantly on the move. Their heart is never at peace. They can't, say, look into themselves properly, objectively, and say, hey, I gotta work on my problem. This and that, this and that. They start um, moving towards you know, the person I want to be. Instead of acting like or pretending, you actually work towards that person. Understand their mindset. Okay, if I want to be like that famous person, right? Look at their character. Is that character really worth the fame? Is that something side, some a uh, side of that person that that makes you, you know, very how to say impressed? More often or not, those people who can retain that fame and stuff like that is because they are a really good person or they really um, care about something. Maybe care about their arts as an actor, maybe care about their communities. Um, outside the fame, they live humble, fru uh, frugal, humble life. They don't cause any problems to the society, cause any scandals, clean record. Uh, they know and they've been faithful to their family. Uh, um, spouses they understand their responsibilities to the society as well every words they say they think they understand the implications they don't go and chase after whatever trends of the time sensibility you don't do nonsense right yes he might be a fun and cheerful person not hired holier than thou but all these good characters good qualities is what make a person likable and famous there's no need to pretend any of this. Those are, those are something. If you actually be, uh, if you actually work on yourself, you will naturally be that person. Um. Okay. Yeah. Bao Ming Jian Xin. Same thing. <clears throat> if you should do all these, like you know, so-called good things because of fame, it becomes a sort of transgression. It's not real. Fame will not be obtained in that way. The fame that obtained that way is just marketing. It's just false marketing in a way. Uh, a true way, like, like I just say, you just work on yourself and you improve and just be a good, decent person, naturally come to you. And even if it comes to you, it does not affect you. Because some people get it to their head and they get all high and mighty and arrogant and the fame drop, infamous opposite effects, right? Because you have no dramas, the paparazzi can't even find any stories on you, they can't even make any news out of you because you are just a normal human being doing the job very well, being a very good person. So they will not trouble you as well. This is a double-edged sword, you know, you can use fame to benefit a lot of people. Master Ching can use his fame to benefit a lot of people. Because of people like him, famous, Example, bait, the other famous people that are attracted to him because of his 60 years, 70 years of examples, gives confidence. So that's how you use the fame properly, to, to, to rally people in a way. That's how leader was made, right? Rally, ability to speak on behalf of the masses. People elected you to speak on behalf of them. And to be on that position, your mind cannot just think about yourself. You cannot just be thinking about, you know, what's what's trendy next time. You know, what's the 
secret, uh, whatever, whatever is you know on that um, fluctuating thing. It's not what you should be pursuing. You should be pursuing something that is long term. You know, that is for the for the common good, and it's very old fashioned, but it's good things. It doesn't matter. It's old fashioned or new fashion. It's human. You know, who doesn't want to live in a society of people who a more caring society or doesn't want you know to be a more caring person stuff like that right um yeah fame also can cause negative effect like you know jealousy like even person who do so well will still get jealousy still get defamed for something they didn't do it applies even to Buddha as well or not just Master Chinko so this is uh, something you need to think about. Those are double-edged sword. They come in one package. They come in one package. They are one pack, one done deal. You you get all the goods. You get all the bads. And if you can't um, drive it, it will drive you. Right. And then at that time you want you just want to be a normal person. It's too late. It's, it's way too late. You're already there. Uh, either you fall very hard or you go in. So Buddha and Bodhisattva, they are famous, obviously, right? The famous of thousands of years, including the sages like Jesus, Muhammad. Those are people who are not there just to like, you know, oh, me, me, me. They're not like that. Obviously, they are doing what they are doing. They're doing their job, responsibility as a teacher to the communities. And whatever they do out of their heart, right? And that was observed by everyone. And everyone recorded. It. it becomes a news. That news, if it really touches the hearts of thousands of people, emulated by thousands of people, uh, you know, and those people who emulate the good deeds of these pe- uh, of these sages, you know, they themselves propagating, or oh, this is coming from this person who you know, heal the poor, uh, uh, help the sick, uh, be charitable, uh, you know, able to withstand humiliation, give your left cheek and then right cheek, let them slap you both sides. Sorry, I'm very bad at paraphrasing Bible. Or in Buddha's term, you know, able to withstand the humiliations and torture of a king uh, in his past life, you know, being cut into a thousand pieces. He's still able to withstand because of his deep meditation. Those things touches people and those things are emulated by people in their own life. That's how fame works properly. Um, they don't need to spread themselves. They just do what is good out of their heart, touches thousands of people's heart because every being is a Buddha. And and if it touches that little part, that that, that part that yearns for the goodness in them, and it will be spreading wide, and it will last long. It will, it will even become a beacon of strength, a time of great adversities, you know, like terrible atrocities happening, people still have that noble character coming out, you know, standing for the weak, you know, at the, in, the, in the face of some sort of tyranny, you know, some sort of oppressive situation. It doesn't have to be grand, it can be even in the family settings where they uh, face this kind of abuse and stuff like that, but they're able to stand up, still have that driving force to help people. And, and some of them are inspired by these sages. Exploits. That's how you use fame. This is how fame was properly used. Um, and to do that, number one, you need to be, uh, you need to learn, you need to learn how to, to be actually be good. Like it's not just, people say you're a nice guy or you're a good person. That's it's good, but that's not the point. It's, that thing comes naturally. What you want to know is, can you face yourself? And say, yep, I did nothing wrong by myself, by others. And if you did, the heart is at peace. Then, then does it doesn't matter anymore? Anything else? Because everything will be on a upright trajectory. And even you have issues and problems, you're no longer feeling insecure. Right? That's, we have problem with insecurity. People do this, they're trying to find fame to cover up. 
the insecurities that to boost up the ego. Problem is, if you're secured, how do these people secure? Like I say, you know yourself, you know your weakness, you know your strength. Being a, a genuine person, uh, you do what you need to do, you do it moderately, appropriately, and you understand your responsibilities. You also understand when to relax, stuff like that. You're secured. You don't need to overreact. You don't need to jump, be jumpy about anything. You don't need to mindlessly pursue anything. So that's one of the one of the advantages. And you know the law of karma even better. Uh, you know all good deeds will not go unrewarded. All bad deeds will not go unpunished. It's a simple. You, know, you can teach three years old like that, but friends of temptation, how many people can stand their ground? And if you can't stand your ground, how do you recover from that, from falling towards the temptation? There's also another work to do. It's the ongoing, the ongoing process. You have to you know, do the hard work. There's no other way around it. No ego boosting can help you. That's how you be a human. Um, so a human realm is the best for Buddhahood because of this for enlightenment. Because you have good and bad coming. You know, you won't always be in pain all the time. Obviously I can't that people are like con- suffering from this, but generally we, we have good and bad. You know, and, and, and and this mix of good and bad helps us to see things clearer than simply say you're in heaven or a place that, like heaven where everything is served up to you the dish on the golden plate Buddha his life is basically heaven heaven like everyone giving to him whatever he wants he gets but he's very aware he's very enlightened so he's not he's not clouded by this but for me I can't you know, I'll get slack when I get too comfortable so um, I think I'll stop here Continue next week uh, about the uh, not much. There's two more sent. There's two more sentence. Continue next Monday. Thank you so much for today, guys. Um, may the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land. Repay the four kinds of kindness above. Relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this. Or bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion. Leave the teaching for the rest of this life. Then be born together in the land of ultimate. Amita. 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 Everyone. Have a good night. See you next Monday. See you. I mean to fall.